Hi guys, I thought I'd give you a, a quick update on the uh, the new reflow uh, rework uh, preheater um, and what I've decided to do for you know the second attempt. Um, I've basically taken an old um, PC case that I got uh, off of one of the recycling guys when he came to pick up some uh, scrap tellies. I've um, I've turned the fan around in the uh, in the power supply so uh, the uh, power supply is sucking air in uh, to the cabinet rather than blowing it out I've uh, got a fan uh, here again which is blowing air in and I've fitted another one this side which is uh, again blowing air in uh, the idea <coughs> is to get a local company to uh, just cut a square in here and um, fit the uh, the ceramic preheater into the centre of the uh, the case here. Um, as that gets fairly warm underneath, I thought it'd be a good idea to have these fans blowing air around the case, and uh, then it most of it just blows out here. And I might even cover these holes up. But we've basically got an on-off switch down there. A uh, little red LED that comes on when the mains power is on and uh, each fan is controlled by uh, a switch down here and again we've got you know, just some lights here to um, show you when the fans are running and the mains is on so that's that I can have one or the other uh, selected and so yeah I'm quite happy with that it's at quite a nice height to work on and uh, yeah, I'm just going to put this uh, camera on the tripod and I'll show you some of the other bits that, uh, that I've bought for this project. Hi, right. Um, this is the ceramic preheater I've bought. Um, it's a uh, 650 watt unit. And uh, the idea is to mount it into an old PC power supply case, which I've uh, which well, I, I have cut this hole out. It's, uh, it was already that size. I've just taken some of the uh, the tabs off around the outside, and if you look, it's uh, it's not a bad fit. Now I'm either going to secure this in place with some very high temperature silicon, um, automotive silicon, I, I have got some here but the temperature doesn't go up high enough, or I've got some um, uh, fire jointing uh, compound that comes in a tube, well, that sets uh, hard and obviously that will withstand temperatures up to about a thousand degrees, um, so whichever way I do it I'm not sure yet, but I shall just put a bead um, you know, all around here. The idea with this then is to mount it uh, into the PC case I just showed you in the hole that will get cut out. Um, I'm hoping to find somebody locally that's got a flow gel or, or something like that so they can cut out a really nice accurate uh, <coughs> square into the, uh, into the side of the cabinet. But uh, we'll see, I might have to do it by hand. But don't know yet, so that's that bit. Um, other things we've bought, um, well, the main component to drive all of this is this um, Arduino Uno, and uh, it's just basically a, an 80 mega 3 to 8 uh, chip. Um, you connect it to your USB port, got power in there, uh, it's very basic, you've got a 3.3 uh, regulator. Here, crystal, uh, and that's about it. Um, it's got uh, 14 digital I/O pins uh, along the sides, and uh, six of those are PWM uh, pins, so ideal for some of the things we might be doing with this. And we've got uh, six analog input pins, uh, little reset button there. Um, Basically, you just plug this into your uh, computer, um, 
write the program in it's a version of C. Uh, write the program, upload it to this, uh, disconnect it, reset it, and then the chip will just run the program. Uh, simple as that, really. Once you've finished making whatever it is you want to make, you can actually buy a chip on its own with a, with a couple of components, a few capacitors and the crystal. You can put those components onto a, a small breadboard uh, so you don't have to use this all the time. Uh, it keeps the cost down as well. So that's what we'll be basing uh, this uh, re rework idea on. Um, I also am looking at the, the, uh, the pickaxe uh, chip for, for this. It's got more inputs uh, and outputs, etc. But uh, you know, this may be enough. I'm, I'm hoping to get a pickaxe as well, just to uh, just have a look, see which is the uh, the best. But that's what it will be based around. Um, and then we've got a. Uh, uh, a Max 31855. It's basically a thermocouple amplifier. It, it works purely on K-type thermocouples. Um, that's it there. Again, this can um, be used just on breadboard, or it will plug into the uh, the Arduino Uno as well. You just connect the K-type uh, into here, and uh, it will allow temperature readings of between minus 200 and uh, up to uh, 1350 degrees centigrade. So absolutely perfect for uh, for what we're doing. Um, so that would be that. I've um, I actually bought two of those, uh, so I could, if I wanted to, have. Uh, two thermocouples running at the same time and what will happen once the program has been written the, uh, the information will be sent to uh, either this uh, LCD panel um, I bought four, uh, I'm really bad. three of these from China at a ridiculously low price I don't know how they can possibly do it for that but this is designed to uh, plug straight in to the top of the UNO. Make sure we get these pins right. I'm not going to power it up, but uh, yeah, they just literally plug in like that. Th these are called shields. Um, any plug in board, and there are a lot available for the UNO, are called shields. And you can get them for, for all sorts. You can get wireless uh, shields and LCD shields like this. And if you can think of it, there somebody's probably made a made a PCB shield that <laughs> plugs into the Uno for a particular task. Um, so the idea originally was to just use this. It's got um, quite useful buttons on here. We've got uh, select. Uh, up, down, left and right, and reset. And it's um, two lines of uh, characters and uh, we can have it showing uh, you know, set temperature and actual temperature uh, on both lines. So you know, in theory we could have two thermocouples uh, running this. Uh, or you know, I've got two others, so we might do separate ones. Uh, that's, that's all to be decided uh, based on the program and yeah, with the UNO of course you've got limited programming space so you know, it may end up that we're having uh, 180 mega chip for each um, each thermocouple and a display for each the other thing about the, uh, the UNO is it does actually have uh, a video output according to the, um, what I'm reading and you can have a simple video out to uh, to a monitor uh, or a TV. So I'm also looking into uh, into that. Again, the only problem is that the more things you've got running the, uh, on this, the, the less things you can actually do with it um, because everything requires a pin or three or four pins. 
so eventually you'll run out of memory space, um, microprocessor speed, or uh, or I/O pins. So we'll see. Um, I should have a go with uh, what we've got and uh, and see how it goes. Um, what else did we get? Oh yeah, we've bought a uh, straightforward uh, relay. There's a full relay pack. This is just to switch the bottom heater uh, on and off as the thermocouple senses the temperatures. Um, this is a 10 amp uh, 10 amp relays, and the switching I think was five. Oh yeah, it's a, they're, they're five volt relays, so again, that, that's perfect uh, for the uh, the Uno. I won't be using this long term, but what I wanted to do is just use it whilst we're prototyping all of this, because it's much easier to hear the relay click on and off rather than have to look at a solid state relay uh, LED status. Um, so that's what we'll be using to prototype it. Once we're finished and it's working correctly, we'll then swap over to these. And that's a straightforward solid state relay. Um, trigger voltage is anything between 3 and 32 volts DC. Uh, and then it will allow 24 to 380 volts AC to pass at the other side. Um, nice thick metal plate on the back. So we can bolt those to uh, the PC cabinet probably. Um, but yeah, we've got four of those. Again, I've, I've waited a couple of weeks for these from uh, China. Again, stupid money. It's so much cheaper than buying this stuff over here. So we've got four of those. Um, other thing we bought, um, and this did actually come from the UK, was some ceramic uh, connectors. 400 volt and 24 amp uh, AC, but it's really the temperature I was bothered about. Uh, obviously, the uh, preheater has to have uh, connections made. At the moment, they've got little crimped on connections there, but I'll probably just trim those off and use the uh, use the ceramic box. So uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, yeah, that's about it, really. So, um, hopefully, once we've got the program written and everything uh, joined up, we'll, uh, we'll have something to uh, report back on. The only slight issue is uh, this ceramic plate, the, uh, the frequency that it's working on might not be ideal for the, uh, the things we're actually going to do with it. Uh, the best ceramic dark infrared heater apparently is made by Elstein, which is a German company. And uh, they give out infrared at a specific wavelength designed specifically for uh, reworking boards and things. So, you know, in the end we might change the preheater to uh, one of the Elstein ones. Uh, and the same with the, the top heater. This will be uh, a similar uh, preheater uh, mounted in some sort of uh, cover probably that directs everything downwards and hopefully it'll be on some sort of movable platform so we can lower it and raise it up as required. So yeah, quick update, just, uh, just a few bits to show you and uh, I'll keep you informed over the next few weeks and uh, yeah, we'll see how we go with this uh, attempt number two at a uh, at a rework. Uh, uh, sorry, a preheating platform. I'll catch you later.